Hello everyone. So today I want to teach you a trick for uh, solving op amp circuits that I think will be really helpful. I know that a lot of students really struggle um, with op amps and how to uh, plug in the equivalent circuit for an op amp into the circuit that you're working with. And I'm going to teach you a method that I think will uh, make it much, much easier for you, for those of you that are, that are struggling. Also, if you want a better understanding of some of the practical aspects of op amp circuits, I've put a series of videos, um, a playlist from another YouTube channel in the description below, and they do a really good job of just kind of outlining the more practical aspects of op amps. But for now, when it comes to doing the circuit analysis for an ideal op amp, I'm going to teach you a method uh, that is going to make things, I think, much easier for you. So let's first sketch out the equivalent circuit for an ideal op amp. So you have your, your op amp here. So you have the, the out, output. And then you have your non-inverting input and your inverting input. I want to make note of the fact that these minus and plus signs are not referring to voltages in the circuit. They are simply labels to designate certain pins of your op amp. What go, the, the plus and minus signs that go inside with our equivalent circuit, those refer to actual voltages. But these plus and minus signs, these are just labels, okay? So this would be our non-inverting input. And this would be our inverting input. I'm going to sketch this lead a little bit higher up here just to make it easier to draw what's inside. So that's essentially the symbol for an op amp. But what is inside? What's inside or what it effectively acts like for an ideal op amp is this. You have an open circuit. And then you also have a dependent voltage source tied to ground. And the voltage on this dependent voltage source is, it's dependent on the voltage on your open circuit here. So this just connects to your output there. And it's dependent specifically on this voltage we're going to call VD. And this plus and minus is actually referring to a voltage. It's a voltage across this open circuit here. So, and you always, whenever you're sketching this out, you always put the plus uh, with the plus on the non-inverting non input. And the minus with the minus on the non-inverting input. So, um, and then we say that this is equal to a VD, the output here. So anytime you see a circuit and you are doing an analysis assuming an ideal op amp, essentially the op amp will effectively act like what's inside of this. And like I said before, what I find students sometimes get tripped up on is being able to then plug in this um, or what's inside of here into the circuit. And so I'm going to get walk you through an example to illustrate uh, a method for, for plugging, plugging this into the circuit that will, I think, make things easier. So let's, let's begin with this simple example here. 
let's suppose we have um, an op amp circuit here. So we have a, an output voltage to find, and we also have an input voltage to find. And let's suppose we want to find out what is the, basically the voltage gain of this total amplifier circuit. So what, what is V out over Vn? We want to find that ratio. So as I said, what's inside of here acts like this whole thing. So what you have to do is you have to take this, what's inside of here, and replace it with this. So the way you easily replace it though, don't do it in your head. What I'd recommend you do is first step is one, Redraw the circuit with the op amp really large. So we'll go ahead and redraw that. Um, add another page here. Okay, so going to redraw the same circuit, but we're going to draw it with a very large triangle. So just make it huge there. And M. So that was our, oops, here's our inverting. Then we have our non-inverting input. And then we have V in. Okay, so now that you've already drawn it, you've made a big space in here. So you've got plenty to, to work with there. Then what you do, is you add your open circuit here. Go ahead and just sketch that in. Sketch your open circuit in there. Then what you want to do is add a plus sign where the wherever the plus is here on the the on the labels for your pins. So add a plus sign there because there's a plus sign there and then add a minus sign here, because there's a minus sign here. If the circuit was drawn differently, where the plus was up on top, the, the plus label uh, or your non-inverting input, well then you would have flipped that. So you basically just define, you define a voltage across the open circuit that aligns with the plus and minus signs of uh, the op amp. And you can call that VD. So once you've sketched that out, then what you can do is you can forget about the plus and minus signs that were actually on the op amp here. So we can erase that. So get rid of that. Okay, so create the open circuit, add the plus and minus voltage labels that correspond with the plus and minuses that were on the op amp. Then erase that, get rid of it. You don't care about that now. Now you have this voltage defined. Then what you do is you add your dependent source here. Plus always going on the top, minus going on the bottom. Stick a ground going out like that. Then connect this to your output. And this voltage is always just going to be AVD. Now you have the equivalent circuit plugged in there. 
as a last step, what you should do then is, is you should erase the triangle. So go around and just get rid of the whole thing. And that is effectively what the op amp is acting like. So the beautiful thing about this is now that you've erased the whole thing, it's just a circuit, an ordinary circuit with, it has an open circuit, it's got a dependent voltage source, and you're used to solving those ordinary circuits. Now you don't even have to think about the op amp. This is just an ordinary circuit that you solve using your, your ordinary methods that you're use, used to. So what I'd recommend then is what you do is once you've done that, go ahead and redraw the circuit, but simplified. Um, it's kind of drawn a little bit awkwardly, but we could redraw this. We could redraw this as um, following here. So we've got two resistors. We have our open circuit here, minus plus VD connects to ground, and we have our other resistor, this is R2, this is R1, and then we have our dependent voltage source, and then we have our output voltage. So notice how it's the same circuit. We just simplified it there. And now this thing is just so much more manageable. We've simplified our op amp circuit just to this. Now, you don't have to, you can almost forget about the op amp. You can be like, I don't even care about it now. Now I know that it effectively behaves like this. I'm gonna use my regular circuit analysis techniques to figure out this voltage ratio. The only thing that you want to keep in mind when working with an ideal op amp is to remember that this A value is assumed to be infinite, okay? So in other words, so, so V0 is equal to AVD, right? This is our voltage source there, so V0 is just equal to AVD. And if you solve for, for VD, What, is it, what does this say if A is, is really, really massive? VD will go to zero. So if A goes to infinity, then VD, we can say, is equal to zero volts. So the only thing you need to keep in mind when doing this is that the voltage is going to be zero across this open circuit. And I know that's kind of counterintuitive because you're used to thinking that it, it almost likes, it, it's like it acts simultaneously like a short and an open circuit at the same time. We know that the current has to be zero through this because it's, it's an open circuit. But because of the fact that our gain is so massive, we can approximate essentially and say that VD is about, is approximately zero volts. And so you can use that assumption to really simplify your analysis. You don't have to do that assumption. You could just solve it as is using normal circuit analysis te techniques and then take the limit as A approaches infinity. Um, but we can actually really simplify things if we just assume that the voltage here is zero. So if that's the case, solving our circuit here, we can say that this voltage is zero volts, right? Because if this is zero volts and we know VD is zero volts, this has to be zero volts. What that means then is that this current, I'll call it IN, IN is going to be equal to VN divided by R1, right? Because this is the, the voltage, VN is the voltage between here and ground, but then this is also at zero volts, so the voltage across the resistor is Vn, so the current flowing in this direction is just Vn divided by R1. So that's the current going in there. 
Um, so we know we know that. Then what we could do is we want to be able to relate um, your our input voltage to the output voltage, right? Um, so um, we could what we could do is we could try doing there's a lot there's different ways we could try and solve this, but we could try doing a KVL loop around around here. So if we do that, we have plus, we have plus VD plus the voltage across R2, which is just going to be equal to the current through R2 times R2. And we know that because this is an open circuit, there's no current flowing, IN is going to be the same current going through R2. So that will be Vn over R1 times R2, and then plus our voltage V0, which is equal to zero. Now, as I said, we can say we can set this equal to zero because we know the gain is really huge, right? And then um, so then we can then just solve uh, here we, we have V0 is equal to negative. Vn times R2 over R1. And so we get the result that V0 over Vn is equal to minus R2 over R1. So that was that was what we were trying to solve. And this is what you call basically an inverting amplifier configuration because it boosts um, the it boosts the magnitude of your voltage, but then because of the negative sign, it flips the polarity of it. But anyway, I hope that helps as far as plugging in like the equivalent circuit. Um, rather than rather than going back and and you know look looking at this and then in your imagination trying to like plug the equivalent circuit in and then writing it all out as you go, break it up into steps. First, take your circuit. And one, draw the op amp really, really big, um, like we did. We drew a huge triangle. Then two, you add um, an open circuit, and then you add voltage polarities to the open circuit. But they have to correspond with the, the signs or the labels of the op amp. So plus on plus, minus on minus. Then you can erase the plus and minus signs on the op amp itself, those labels. Then add your dependent voltage source, erase your triangle, and then simplify the circuit. And then from there, it's like solving any other circuit. Once you've gotten that step of plugging in the right equivalent circuit, the rest should be what you're used to. So again, hope that was helpful, and I will see you again in the next video. Thanks. Hello everybody, thanks for watching. If you found this content helpful, uh, would you please consider liking and subscribing to the channel? That will help other people find it. And if, if you won't do it for me, will you do it for my cat, Muon? Named after my favorite subatomic particle, by the way. So, um, she will be very, very upset if you do not like and subscribe. So please, um, don't, don't disappoint. How, how could you say no to this cuteness?